welcome students in our lecture of measures of shapes this is a very important topic not only in your course of probability and statistics but also a very important understanding and conceptual understanding topic for your advanced course of statistical inference so firstly what do we mean by the measures of shape when we talk about the measures of shape or measures of shapes we basically mean the different types of shapes or the profiles that we can get in the frequency distribution diagram and uh, there can be many different types of shapes like like there can be uniform shapes there can be uh, um, exponential shape uh, frequency distributions but particularly over here we are interested in a explicit type of shape and that is what we call a normal distribution shape of the frequency distribution diagram so let's see what we mean by this in detail the frequency distributions can have any shape these shapes are visible on the bar charts and on the histograms of so many shapes available we are particularly interested in the shape of a normal distribution a normal distribution is a symmetric bell shaped curve it is just like this one so this is the shape of a normal distribution it is symmetric as we can see that whatever the area is on the right hand side of the center of symmetry which is marked with a, a blue color uh, mark uh, uh, straight line so whatever we have on the right hand side of the center of symmetry uh, in terms of the area the same is the area on the left hand side of the center of symmetry this is our center of symmetry so it's a perfectly even function or a symmetric function and it looks like a bell shaped curve the bell the ringing bell shaped curve normal distribution is symmetric bell shaped curve this curve appears as the envelope of a bar chart or a histogram so it appears as an envelope so uh, of a histogram or a bar chart so if we have a bar chart or a histogram and we and we basically try to connect the bars on a, with a free hand curve then that curve would appear to be normally distributed but there can be deviations from this normal distribution shape and the deviations can be on the horizontal axis as well as on the vertical axis the deviations on the horizontal axis from normal distributions is called the skewness and they can be either positively or negatively skewed deviations and the deviations on the vertical axis uh, which is in terms of the height uh, being not appropriate as it is required for a normal distribution is called the kurtosis and there can be negative kurtosis called platycurtic or there can be positive kurtosis called leptocurtic let's see in a bit little detail that what do we mean by this skewness and kurtosis thing so over here in this slide we can see that we have a normal distribution shape on the top and on the lower uh, uh, on the lower side of this normal distribution we have shown what do we mean by skewness and kurtosis so skewness basically is an english language word taken from skew and skew means being biased so if our frequency distributions show biasness then we say that they are skewed and what do we mean by this biasness if you look into the curve over here for the skewness we can see that for lower values of the data set the frequencies are high but for the higher values of the data set the frequencies are low so it appears that they are biased towards one particular range of the data set and, and giving them high frequencies and this type of uh, biasness is basically called skewness and more appropriately it is called positive skewness because when we find the factor of skewness for 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 this example it will appear to be a positive number correspondingly we can also have a situation in which the frequencies for the higher values of the data set are very high as compared to the frequencies of the lower values of the data set and then the distribution appears to be skewed in this way that is majority of the portion is on the right hand side and that um, uh, i mean majority of the frequencies are on the right hand side and the tail goes towards the zero end and when we find the skewness factor for these distributions it comes out to be a negative value so this is also called negative skewness this this is what we mean by the deviations on the horizontal axis and what do we mean by the deviation of the vertical axis defined by the kurtosis Uh, look we should understand this thing that normal distributions have some specific height and this is shown by a black curve over here but there can be deviations in the height like we can have heights which are lesser than uh, the accurate the accurate appropriate height and when this happens we get 
a red curve, something like this. And this type of curve is basically called a platycrotic curve and it shows negative kurtosis or if you will find the kurtosis value then it will be a negative number. Similarly, there can be deviations in such a way that we obtain uh, curves uh, which have height higher than the actual normal distribution curve uh, height required. And when this happens, we call this one a positive kurtosis and which is also called a leptocurtic curve. And if you find a kurtosis value for this case, it will be a positive number. This black curve which shows the actual normal distribution is also called the mesocurtic curve. So this is what we mean by the deviations in the height. We should note this thing. Again, this kurtosis is shown in a rather better zoomed figure. We should note this thing that whether it is a platycurtic, mesocurtic or leptocurtic. In all cases, the skewness would be zero because all these curves are symmetric. The skewness show deviations from symmetry. Right, so all these uh, curves are symmetric, so there is no deviation in symmetry, so there is no skewness present in any of these cases. Over here, we have shown the the, the concept of skewness in terms of the box plots. Uh, if we have a perfect normal distribution with zero skewness, then the box plot would be in such a way that quartile two mark would be in the center of the box plot. But if we have negative skewness, then quartile two mark will be more towards the and the, uh, the Q3 value or towards the maximum value of the data set, as we can see over here. And if we have positive skewness, then the quartile two value will be more towards the uh, Q1 value or towards the minimum value of the data set. So that's how we show the skewness in terms of the box plots as well. Now, we have seen three different type of shapes, uh, two are deviations and one is the actual shape over, so far, the, norm, the normal distributions which we have seen and the deviations are skewness and kurtosis. But in the scope of our course, we are only interested right now in the uh, normal distributions and the deviations which are called the skewness. So what are the characteristics? Characteristics of normal distributions is that that mean is the middle value of the data set. That is mean is equals to median and this is equivalent to mode, which basically means that the mode showing the higher fre highest frequencies present in the data set would be, would be for the mean and the median values. The skewness is always zero for a perfect normal distribution. For the characteristics of skewed distributions, the mean and median are not equal to each other. Skewness can be greater than zero, call it as a positive skewness. And skewness can be lesser than zero, which is called the negative skewness. Skewness can be determined mathematically as well by making use of this formula. This is also called the third movement equation. Over here, we can see that what we are doing is finding Two factors one is the numerator factor and second one is the denominator factor in the denominator factor if we see then this xi minus mean and then and then squaring it is basically the same thing uh, as the variance part so we are basically finding the difference between the data set values and the mean and then squaring them and multiplying with the probability or the relative frequency and then summing them all to the total number of groups or the classes that we have got so this is the same thing as the variance. And once we have got this variance, we take the 1.5 root of it to get this whole denominator factor. In the numerator, what we are doing is finding again the difference between the actual value of the data set and the mean value. So we are finding the difference between the actual value of the data set and the mean value, cubing it and then multiplying it with the probability or the relative frequency of the data set value in hand and then summing all these products to the total number of classes or groups that we have decided upon. In all these, in all this, in all these factors and in this equation, mu is the mean value of the population. Population is the same thing as the data set for us. Uh, and small n is the total number of groups of class or classes that we have got. So in summary, following criteria can be used to check if the shape of the frequency distribution is normal or not. The first one, the frequency distribution graph and in this curve, the height, heights must be symmetric from the center of symmetry. The mean should be equal to median and skewness should be equal to zero. These three criteria are used. We also sometimes look into the normal distributions by use of the box plots, which we will see in the examples to follow. All these three criteria must, must support each other. That means, this means that uh, if we are getting uh, an interpretation that the data If you are getting an interpretation that the data appears to be normally distributed using the frequency distribution graphs, 
and the same would be shown by the mean and median values and the same should be shown by the skewness values. So let's move on to the examples and to see how these things happen. We start with example one. We are given this data set and for this data set, which is given below, we have to determine the shape of the frequency distribution and the box plot of the data set. We'll first start with the box plot. And but before starting with the box plot, uh, let's summarize this data in the form of the class interval tables. We have done this example previously as well. So I'm just uh, basically reproducing this example uh, uh, over here in the form of its class interval table. We're not discussing how we obtain it because we have already, dis already discussed it in our lecture of class interval data summarization. So this is our data set in terms of the class interval tables. And now we will uh, find the box plot and the uh, shape measures of shapes for it. So for the box plot, we need uh, three values firstly, Q1, Q2, and Q3. So Q1 can be determined using the uh, location and value formula. So location is one upon four, four into 40, we get the result as 10th, which means the 10th value in the data set would give the Q1 value and 10th value appears in the third class. So this is our quartile group. And when we plug in the values of class three, there is a lower boundary of this class is 2.75, the frequency is 13, cumulative frequency preceding this group is six, and the class height is 0 0.6. So when you plug in all these values, we get Q1, which is 2.9346. In a very similar way, we can also find Q2 and Q3s. So Q3 appears to be 3.3961. The location of it is 20th, and 20th appears to be in the fourth class. And if you look into the table, so the values of the fourth class are the frequency is 13, cumulative frequency preceding this uh, class is 19, and the lower class boundary value is 3.35. Class height is again 0 0.6. So when you plug in these values in the formula for finding the Q2, we get 3.3961. And remember, this is also the median value. Lastly, Q3, the location of it is 3 upon 4 into 40. And it appears to be the, third, the 30th value in the data set. And 30th value again appears to be in the fourth class of the data set. So this fourth, uh, if you look into the class interval table, the fourth class has a frequency of 6. And the cumulative frequency is 32. So the fourth class has a, has a frequency of 30. Cumulative frequency is 19 and lower value of the class boundary is 3.35. So when you plug in the values, we get the Q3 value, which is 3.8769. Now the making of the box plot, we know in the box plot, we make it in the form of the five number summary. The first is the box. Let's discuss the box, which is shaded blue in color. We have Q1 at 2.9. I have rounded up to one place after the decimal all these values. So Q1 is 2.9, Q2 is 3.3, and Q3 is 3.8. So edges can be easily put like Q1 and Q3, but where do we put the Q2 value, right? This is the question that, that is need to be answered properly over here, right? So where to put the Q2 value, right? The Q2 mark. The Q2 mark is 3.3. But if you see that uh, how far it is away from Q1, so 3.3 minus 2.9 is basically equals to 0 0.4 and 3.8, which is the Q3 value minus Q2, which is 3.3, the result appears to be 0 0.5. So 0 0.5 is definitely greater than 0 0.4. So basically this means that uh, the, the Q2 mark should be more, uh, should be basically, the Q2 mark should have a higher distance from Q3 and somewhat a smaller distance from Q1, right? So let's put it in this way that our Q2 mark should be set that it should be, uh, should show more distance from Q3 and comparatively a smaller distance from Q1. So it goes something like this, right? I hope that's clear. Now, remaining are the minimum and maximum values in the data set. Our minimum value is 1.6 and our max value is basically 4.7. So how far is 1.6 from the Q1? That is first edge. So let's do this thing. So 2.9 minus 1.6 is basically 1.3. And how far is 4.7 from 3.8? 
so 4.7 minus 3.8 makes it equals to 0 0.9 so definitely 1.3 is a greater distance as compared to 0 0.9 which basically means this thing that this distance should be greater that is the distance between 1.6 and q1 and the distance between 4.7 and q.3 should be comparatively smaller as we can see in this figure over here as well so that's how we can make these uh, this box plot right and we can see this thing that in this box plot it is easily seen that this does not show a perfect symmetry or a perfect symmetry of a normal distribution because the middle value the q2 value is not exactly in the center slightly slightly moved away from the center but not exactly in the center as we can see over here so let's move on to the criteria now the frequency distribution diagram the frequency distribution diagram is made in such a way that it's a bar chart on the horizontal axis we have the last mark values and on the vertical axis we have the frequencies right so as we can see that uh, if you try to connect the bars with the freehand curve you can see that from the center of the symmetry having that frequency height is 13 on the right side we have a height which is little bit greater as compared to the heights on the left hand side of the center of symmetry so this showed that this the, there would be skewness present in the data set and the skewness would be such that it should show some negative value because on the right hand side the frequency height is higher as compared to the frequency height on the left hand side let's find the mean value the mean is determined in exactly the same way as we uh, learned this in the group data statistics so we will, we will be using the class mark values so every class mark would be multiplied with its probability or relative frequency and in the end we will sum up all these products and when we do so we get a result which is 3.3949 as the mean value 22 we just calculated it was basically 3.3961 so we can see that till two places after the decimal the mu that is the mean and the q2 appears to be same but from the third place after the decimal the difference starts appearing it basically shows that there is slight difference between median and, and the mean value and this slight difference basically suggests this thing that we will do we, we will not have zero skewness over here rather there would be some skewness definitely present no matter how light or how slight it is but there will be some skewness present next we compute this value of skewness to justify our results so far as discussed earlier this is our formula for skewness which can also be put in terms of the uh, frequencies uh, relative frequencies or the frequencies of the classes or groups divided by the total frequencies that we have got so this is the same thing as putting it either in the terms of probabilities or putting it in terms of the relative frequencies and since we have six classes uh, so this the uh, we would uh, i mean the skewness in this skewness formula the summation would be done to six classes or six groups so in order to um, to make these things comfortable for us we make a table which is called the skewness table and over here we can see the mean that was calculated calculated was 3.3949 the first two columns are the columns of the class mark and the frequencies which we have already taken from the class interval table the next column is basically subtraction of the mean value from every class mark value and this is shown over here in this column uh, after it the next column shows the difference that we just calculated and a squaring of this difference then the cubing of this difference and in the second last column we are multiplying the square of this difference with the frequency of each class and in the last column we are basically multiplying the cube of this difference with the frequency of each class this is done because you can see in the skewness formula that frequency of each class is multiplied by the cube of the differences and frequency of each class is multiplied by the square of the differences so we are doing it in exactly the same way and later on in the end we sum up these products and we plug in these this this sum of the products in the skewness formula divided by 40 as is required and the denominator dividing by 40 and powering it to 1.5 that is powering by 3 by 2 remember 40 was the total number of frequencies that we had in our data set so when we find this ratio we get a result which is minus 0 0.0842 and we should note this thing that as it was discussed previously it appeared from the frequency distribution diagram that that frequency 
a distribution diagram showed that there will be some skewness and that skewness should be negative and the value of this skewness should be as low would be very low because it was shown by the comparison of the mean and the median values so all these results are supporting each other when we found the skewness value which is minus 0 0.0842 a negative number and a very low magnitude in quantity number so there is skewness present practically theoretically there is skewness present but practically this is so low that it can be assumed that our data is normally distributed but theoretically it is not let's move on to the second example and see how the things change over here we have to find the frequency distribution graph for the number of boys in a committee of three people selected at random from four boys and three girls although we just have to find the frequency distribution graph but we will extend this example for the measures of shapes as well so this example was already done in, and learned in our lecture of the group data statistics so i'm just again reusing this uh, table that we made over there and we'll see how this will be used in our case in this example right now so we make the frequency distribution diagram on the horizontal axis we have basically the x values taken in terms of uh, their class boundaries and on the vertical axis we have the frequencies and we can see again over here that this data does not appear to be perfectly normal rather there appears to be a, a height of frequency that is greater on the left hand side from the center of symmetry and a height of frequency that is lesser so this shows that uh, the that the skewness would be present again over here and it should be positively skewed next we find the mean value since we have just three values of the groups over here so every group value would be multiplied by its relative frequency and when we do so and sum them all we get a result which is 0 0.8571 next we find the q2 or the median value the location of it is 2.4 into 35 remember 35 was the total number of uh, values in the data set so that's why we multiply it with 35 and 17.5 is the location of q2 and 17.5 as we look into the table is in the class 2 having a frequency of 20 the cumulative uh, preceding this uh, class is 10 and the lower value of the class boundary is 0.5 and class height is 1 when you plug in all these values in the q2 equation we get a result which is 0 0.875 which can be approximated to 1 but for the comparison purpose we'll we keep this 0 0.875 value. So now we have mean which is 0 0.8571 and Q2 which is 0 0.875. We should note this thing that they appear to be same till the first place after the decimal. But after this first place, when we look into the second place, we can see that the median value or the Q2 value is slightly higher than the mean value. So whatever the case is, since they are not equal to each other, therefore this suggests that definitely there is some skewness present. Now to find the value of this skewness, we again make use of this formula in which total number of groups are present three. So the summation would be done to, to three uh, number of groups. We make the skewness table. Uh, the first two columns are again taken from the frequency distribution table that we made earlier. So we have in the first column the group values, in the second column the frequencies of these groups, the third column the mean is subtracted from every group value and then we take the square of it and the cube of it and then multiply the frequency of each group with the square of the difference and, and lastly we multiply the frequency of each group with the cube of the difference and the last two columns are then summed uh, to get the total number of the uh, the total uh, of the product of the frequency with the square of the difference and the total of the product of the frequency with the cube of the differences so we get an answer which is 14.285 and 1.22636 we plug in these values in our skewness formula divide with 35 in the numerator and divide with 35 in the denominator as well but the denominator we further take it to root 3 upon 2 that is 1.5 to power one up sorry to power three upon two or to power 1.5 and when we do so we find the ratio to be equal to 0 0.1344 now please note this thing the skewness is very low as was discussed by the frequency distribution diagram and it is a positive value as again it was discussed in the frequency distribution diagram so theoretically there is skewness present no matter how low it is it is present but practically this is such a low value that again we can assume that our data is normally distributed so i hope this is understandable to everybody uh, the basis of shapes topic if there is any queries any confusion then you can uh, write down in the comments and i'll get back to you to resolve your confusions so thank you